Let's take a look at adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing integers. Now, I call these shortcuts. They're not exactly shortcuts, but they're ways of simplifying. Um, I'd say numbers, but it actually can apply to anything. If you have a negative, then a parentheses, then a negative, and then a single number, like this then a uh, negative negative becomes positive. If you have a negative and then a beginning parentheses and a positive and then a single number, a negative parentheses positive becomes negative. If you have a positive and then a um, negative and then a number, that becomes negative. And if you have a positive and a positive, positive positive gives you a positive. So any place in um, math you run across this, you should apply these shortcuts. Um, now, this just doesn't have to be a single x here, or a single f number. It can be a single x. It can be a single anything. Later on uh, in intermediate algebra, when you have a negative, parentheses negative, and this is a square root, uh, again, it will become positive. But uh, signs are the same, becomes positive. Signs are different, becomes negative. It's pretty easy to remember. Now let's talk about combining numbers. I don't like to think of it as adding or subtracting. I like to think of it as just combining numbers. You got positive numbers, you got negative numbers. We got case one. Signs are the same. They're both positive or both negative. I'm going to ignore the signs. Then I'm going to add the numbers. Then our sign of our answer is the original sign, whatever they were originally. Now we have case two. Signs are different. One's positive, one's negative. First step, we'll again ignore the signs. Subtract the smaller number from the larger number. So subtract a smaller number from a large number. And then three, sign of the answer is the original sign of the larger number. And we're going to use those in, in working these first, first problems. <coughs> Our first one, you got negative 5 plus 13. Well, this is case 2. Signs are different. So it says you ignore the signs. So I'm going to write 5 and 13 over here. Subtract a smaller number from a larger number. So we've got 13 minus 5. That gives us 8. And sign of the answer is the original sign of the larger number. A larger number was 13, which originally was positive. So this is going to be a positive 8, or just 8. Let's look at this one. We've got negative 8 plus and a negative 2. Now again, this is a, one of our little shortcuts here. Plus parentheses minus becomes a minus. So I'm going to rewrite this as 8, negative 8 and negative 2. Again, I'm not going to think of this as subtraction. In mathematics, you can really kind of mess you up yourself up by trying to think about this too much. People say, well, I can't wrap my mind around unless you put it into a pra practical um, example. Well, pretty soon you're going to find that you can't come up with a practical example of some of this stuff, uh, or a lot of it. Um, so you just have to kind of accept, and it's just a, a rules you learn, step by step. Well, here we got case one. Signs are the same. 
So we'll go through these three steps. Ignore the signs, add numbers, sign the answer as original sign. Okay, so ignore the signs. So we've got 8 and 2. Add the numbers. We've got 8 plus 2 gives us 10. And sign of the answer is the original signs, which was negative. So this is negative 10. <coughs> now 3. We've got uh, negative 10, 24, and uh, negative 7. Well, this first set of parentheses isn't doing anything, so I'm going to drop it. And then we've got plus 24. Plus parentheses minus becomes a minus from our shortcuts up above. And let's do these first two numbers here. Well, the signs are different. So our steps, this case 2, uh, our steps say to ignore the signs. So we've got 10 and 24. Subtract a smaller number from a larger number. 24 minus 10 gives us 14. And the sign of the, our answer is sign of the, uh, the original sign of the larger number, which is 24, which was positive. Then I'll bring down to minus 7. Now this is case, um, case 2. Signs are different. But if you already know how to do something, don't, don't like reinvent the wheel. You know how to do 14 minus 7. It gives you 7. That's our answer. Now those cases will work up above, but you don't need to do it for, for some of these. Now this next one introduces a new concept, and we're going to show with an example. We're given negative 5. And it says determine the additive inverse of each number. Well, the additive inverse is that, that uh, number with the sign change. So negative 5 becomes a positive 5. And let's look at some more combining numbers. 9 minus a negative 2. This is one of our shortcuts. Negative parentheses negative becomes a positive. So this becomes 9 plus 2. And if I add those together, it gives me 11. Didn't have to use our cases. We know how to do 9 plus 2. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Got negative 50 minus a negative 2. Again, you don't want to think about what this means. What What is a negative 50 minus a negative? What, what in the world does that I mean? You could try to put it on a number line and wrap your mind around that. and uh, You're thinking too hard on it. They're just simple rules. Uh, negative parentheses negative becomes a positive. So this becomes negative 50 plus 2. Now this is case 2. Signs are, signs are different. One's positive, one's negative. So I ignore the signs. So I got 50 and 2. We're going to subtract the smaller number from the larger number. So 15 minus 2 gives us 48. And the sign of our answer is the original sign of the larger number. The larger number is 50, and it originally was negative. So negative 48 is our, our answer. Now, if you got multiplication, multiplication, you multiply just like normal. But you look at the signs. If I got a negative number times a negative number, that's going to give me a positive number. And if we have a positive number times a positive number, that's going to give us a positive number. And if we have a positive number times a negative number, that's going to give us a negative number. And if we have a negative number times a positive number, that's going to give us a negative number. Now for division. Division, you divide just like normal. It's just your sign of your answer is the only thing that you have to worry about. Uh, if we've got negative, divide by negative. Now I'm going to use a fraction symbol here to indicate division. Well, negative divided by negative is positive. If we have a positive divided by a positive, that's going to give us a positive. If we have a positive divided by a negative, that's going to give us a negative. And if we have a negative divided by a positive, that's going to give us a negative. Now again, the signs are the same, becomes positive. Signs are different, becomes negative. And that's in both multiplication and division. So let's look at some problems. We got negative 5 times negative 8. Now to begin with our sign, a negative times a negative is a positive, so we know what that's going to be. And 5 times 8 is 40. So our answer would be a positive 40. So 
Let's look at another one. Negative 2 times 3 times negative 4. Well, let's first multiply these first two numbers together. Now, a negative times a positive is a negative, and 2 times 3 is 6, and then I'll carry down the negative 4. Now, here, a negative times a negative is positive, and 6 times 4 is 24. So that'd be your answer. Now, these next ones ask us to find the reciprocal. Uh, it says multiplicative inverse. Um, we start with 5, and we want to write this in fraction form. You can always create a fraction by putting it over 1. To get our reciprocal, it's best shown with an example like we're doing here. Reciprocal just means flip the fraction. So 5 over 1 becomes 1 over 5. Now, the next one, we got 2 over 3 and they want us to come up with the, the reciprocal. Again, we're going to flip the fraction. Now this one's already in fraction form, so that would just be 3 over 2. So very, very straightforward. Mm, go back up here, do number 11. This is division. We got uh, negative 30 over negative 3. Well, to begin with, a negative divided by negative is positive, and 30 divided by 3 gives us 10. So our answer is positive 10. And our last problem, we've got negative 25 over 5. Well, a negative divided by positive is negative. Signs are different, uh, it's negative. And 25 divided by 5 gives you 5. So our answer would be negative 5. Again, don't let um, combining numbers worry you too much. It's like, why is that the case? Can you give me a practical example? I'm sure you probably don't ask that many questions uh, when the English teacher said, um, you know, I before E except for after C. He probably didn't sit there and lose sleep about um, why the C was different, um, why they choose this rule, who made it up, uh, what purpose, so forth. They're just basic rules you follow.